The platen system on the Viper 2 is what we call a 4-2-1 platen system. Okay, meaning we can either use it so that we can put four smaller items on here, or we can put these two plastic adapters on here. If we were doing a standard front or back on a garment, and now we've got what we call a two-up, or we can take these off and we can put our single adapter on, and then it's one large print area, and that's what we would consider a one-up. So if I'm doing, for example, uh, a full front or a full back, even if I'm just printing one garment, I would put this on like this, and this is still would be considered a two-up, because if I put the other adapter on, there's two areas to put garments. A little note on your platens. When you're putting the adapters on, you do want to make sure you take a look at these. If for any reason, when you put this on, this doesn't sit nice and flat, it's usually because these are a little too wide, it is possible, although rare, that you may have to shave these down a little bit. This has to sit nice and flat. Also, when you're storing these, don't store them leaning up against things. Okay? Don't store them like this. Preferably not even on the, on the sponges, on the uh, foam. Preferably on a flat table just like this so that they don't get warped. You'll notice on this one it wants to stick up a little bit. Now this one's actually okay because when I put a shirt on here and I tuck it taut, it's going to pull that down and it's going to sit fairly flat. If you take a look at this one, look at how this one actually sits much flatter on here because this one was stored properly. And it's even worse on the large one. The large one, you really want to make sure that you lay it down on a nice flat surface because this one warps even easier. Now it's also important, besides your adapters, if you have spare platens themselves, when you store your platen, same thing. First of all, see where I'm lifting this? Okay, that's a no-no. We don't want to do that. What you want to do is always try and lift it from the base. Okay, we don't want to start bending these or distorting these and getting these out of adjustment. When you put it down, again, we don't want to store it like this. It can get a bow in it. We want to make sure that these are stored flat. So the one that you have for the machine, it's usually best to store it on the machine. Any spare ones that you have, just make sure you're storing them nice and flat on a table. Okay, now, what are the dimensions of these? Well, the dimension when it's in a four up, this is seven and a quarter by 11. These numbers are approximate. If we do a two up, now each one of these measures 11 by 16. And if we do the one up, it measures approximately 16 by 24. Now, if we take a platen and we look at the underside of it, okay, one thing you'll notice, you've got these cork strips that's to help make sure that it doesn't slip on the belt. You also have over one side, you've got a Teflon piece of tape and what that's for is to cover up these screws so that the platen doesn't get stuck on the media sensor. The media sensor is this little trigger that's sticking up underneath here and that's your media sensor. We want to make sure that the platen doesn't get stuck on that. Okay, so now Let's take a look at how we would load a platen. 
So when we load a plot, and I'm going to do it currently as a two up. Now when we do this, we normally don't do it on the machine. You would want to have a table or something where you would be preparing this. And if you're running production, you would want to have multiple platens so that we can have one being loaded while one is printing. Now whenever we load it as a two up, we always want the collar to go over towards the control panel. The way I like to load it, is I like to take my fingers, and this shirt has already been pre-treated, and I like to kind of put my fingers up at the shoulder seam and get it the width of the platen, and then I like to just slide my hand back. When I do that, the shirt usually follows in a fairly straight path so that the shirt is loaded on there fairly straight. Now the important thing when loading these is we need to be able to reproduce the way we're loading this each and every time. So when I load these, I typically like to put the collar just off the edge of the platen. That way I can repeat that every single time. I like to check, make sure that I have the same amount of material on both sides. And the way I like to tuck it in is I like to tuck the collar and the bottom end of the garment together, and then I like to tuck the sides together. Now when we tuck, we don't want to push in and really stretch the garment. We want it smooth, but we don't want to stretch it. So as I tuck, I'm not just using a pushing motion, I'm using more of like a curling type motion. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to curl the top and bottom in. We want to make sure that the tag isn't sticking up. And then I'm going to come to the sides and I'm going to curl it. Now you have openings here, so you don't want to push on the openings. That's the space in between the platens. All your excess material just gets tucked underneath the platen. That's how we would load the platen for a two-up. Now, if we were doing a four-up, that's where we don't have the adapters on it, then we typically want the collar out to the front. So we would load it more like this. and then tuck it. The same thing if we were doing the one-up. The one-up would be the same idea, but with the entire garment up here with the collar out to the front of the machine. Now, one of the most important things to remember whenever we're printing is the print surface needs to be the highest, flattest surface. So if you ever had a situation where you've got something that's going to get in the way, such as a pocket or um, a collar. Like if I want to print right up against the collar, what I would do is I would make a jig, perhaps out of a piece of plexiglass, maybe out of a piece of wood, maybe as something as simple as a piece of cardboard, just so that I can elevate certain areas so that I can get this entire surface flat. So let me give you an example of how I would possibly do above a pocket on a garment. We need to make the print surface the highest, flattest surface. Let's take a look at an example here. If I go to put this garment on here and I keep this kind of towards the middle, clearly this sticks up, the buttons and the placket sticks up higher than everything else. Okay, so that is where the gap sensor would set the height to as opposed to the print surface. There may be a one to two millimeter difference, which is too much. So the first thing I'd want to do is slide this over. But if I slide this over, now all of a sudden the shoulder seam gets in the way. And again, I want to print right above the pocket. So what we'll do in a situation like this is we use a jig. So, one thing I would do to make this a little easier 
is I would change it to a 4-up. That way, I could start dropping things out of the way a little bit, but I still have these things to contend with. So I take anything that I'm going to use as a jig. In this case, I'm going to just temporarily use my phone. Now, I wouldn't realistically use my phone, but I want to show you how easy it is to create a jig. I would just set it up here now. And now, when I put this shirt on here, and I tuck in the collar, And then the sides, and then the bottom, clearly you can see that this print surface is now higher than everything else. Therefore, when the height sensor hits this, it'll set the height to this, so I can put my print on there. The print surface is the highest, flattest surface. And that's how easy it is to utilize a jig when printing. We keep referring to this height sensor or gap sensor when we're loading our platen, so I want to make sure that we understand what we're talking about. You've got a light sensor that shoots a beam of light from one side of the machine to the other and when we load the garment we push the garment in far enough so that the sensor would be over the surface of that garment and then using the bed up bed down buttons we raise the bed until the garment breaks that beam as soon as that beam is broken the bed stops raising and then when we let go of the bed up or bed down buttons, the bed drops down slightly to set the garment so that it's the proper distance away from the print head. Now the sensor on the side over by the cartridges, as that beam is broken, that light changes color. And the one over by the control panel is always lit red. So you'll see as we break the beam, you can see that it's activating and the bed is dropping down. Now, when we're loading the platens and we happen to be loading two garments on here, and of course right now I've got dark garments or black garments on here. You want to make sure that the very beginning edge, the back edge here of that first garment is hitting that gap sensor beam. Well it just so happens that when the bed up light is even with the front of the platen, that puts the gap sensor right over about a quarter of an inch onto the garment. So we just want to get this lined up so that the bed up light and the front of the second platen is lined up and now we would hold the bed up button and it's going to hit the gap sensor, the height sensor and I'm going to let go and the bed's going to drop back down again. The fact that it dropped down is very important. Now, I'm going to deliberately pull this out so that the gap sensor light is not hit. First of all, it'll never stop. So I'm just going to let go. Okay, it maxed out there. When I let go, it didn't change height. If you ever go to set the height and it doesn't drop back down, it means you didn't break that beam properly. So now I'm going to lower this back down. Set this in. and then set my height. Now we're going to go to the other side and we're going to actually load it. Since we're doing a dark garment or anytime we're doing a situation where we're doing layers, 
Okay, so of course on a black or a colored shirt, we're going to print a white underbase and then we're going to print color. So it's two layers. So anytime we're doing anything with layers, we want to make sure that we turn the layer light on. So right now you'll notice the button, the top, the center of it is not lit. When we push it, let it go, it lights up with a blue light. Now I know that it's set up for multiple layers. Now we simply come and press the load button and it'll pull the platen in to the loaded position. We're now ready to send the print file over to the printer. Now when we're loading the two up and we're loading a single shirt, I do like to have, even if I'm not using this, I like to have my cover over here. We're now going to push this in. Now we need the gap sensor to hit the very beginning edge of this garment. So I'm going to push this in. Push it in far enough. And then I'm going to hold the bed up button and set the height. Let it go. It dropped down. Remember that's important. That means it broke the gap sensor beam. And since it's a black shirt, it's going to be a multi-layer print. So I'm going to press my layer button, and now we're going to load it. Now, before we load it, what we want to do is we want to check to make sure that that height sensor beam, the gap sensor, scans the entire surface of this garment. So what we like to do is slowly push this in, and make sure that it doesn't change height and then slowly pull it back out. Now, I'm going to deliberately lift this back edge up just so I can show you what happens. So now I'm going to slowly, I'm going to get this in here, I'm going to set my height, now I'm going to slowly push this in and watch what happens with our bed buttons. Okay, the bed is changing height. Okay, anytime that happens, that means either the platens aren't level or something is sticking up where we don't have this loaded properly. So I'm going to reload this. Just tuck this back in here. Push this back in by hand. Reset my gap height. Then again, slowly push this in by hand, and nothing happened this time. So now I'm going to pull it back out slowly. Now, when we do that, when you're pushing it in, you do need to be aware of where your arm is positioned. You don't want to raise your arm up and break that gap sensor beam with your arm either. Now it's very important also that we pull this out now so that the back edge of the platen is not on the media sensor. Now that I'm out past the media sensor, I can press the load button, load the garment, and now I can send the file over and print. There is also a second way that we can set this up, which we'll look at and in the second method that's more done in the ripping software as opposed to the way we actually operate the machine itself. Because when we do it the opposite way with the software, we're not going to load the shirt here. We're actually going to load the shirt here so you would load it the same way you would have as though there were two on here. We just put the very beginning edge of the shirt of this platen underneath and then we can go through and just hit the load button. If we're going to use the second technique where we're actually going to load the platen closest to the opening of the machine, we have to make a change in our ripping software from the standard settings. What we would want to do is we'd want to go into the properties of 
the print queue that we're going to use or all of the print queues if this is a technique that you wish to use all the time. To do so, I'm going to double click on the print queue that I'm going to use, which is my black graphic quality print queue. And I'm going to go into my layout manager. Now the feature that I want to have on is this show import template job dialog. I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to hit OK. Now if I didn't turn that on, this platen here would be if you're facing the front of the machine would be the one away from the machine out towards the front. This platen here is platen 2. This would be the one closest to the opening of the machine. Our collar would be over here. Of course the control panel side of the machine is over on this side. Now if we didn't turn that feature on it would automatically place the first image that we bring in and of course if we're only doing one garment we're only going to bring in one image and it would be placed on this platen. We don't want it to do that. We want it to place the image down here. So now I'm going to open up an image. So I'm going to come up here. First I'm going to pick my template for my media. I'm going to use the 2up new. And now I'm going to bring in my image. So we'll bring in, this one's fine. See what happens here? This is the template dialog box. Basically, if you don't have it turned on where this comes up, it automatically comes in as express, which means it'll fill platen number one first, and then if we bring in the second image, it will bring it into platen number two. In this case, though, I can use the select feature, and I can pick which platen I place this image on. So, of course, in this case, I'm going to place it down here on platen number two. Now I'm going to hit select and import, and notice it brings the image down to platen number two. So although I'm only printing one shirt, I can bring it to the lower platen. Now this design did not rotate. So if I were doing a short image but wide, I could put the collar over here and I can rotate this 180 degrees and turn it upside down. But since we're doing a full front or a full back, of course our collar is going to be over here in orientation. So that is a 270 rotation. If this didn't rotate itself, you would want to rotate it using the rotate function to have the design in the proper orientation depending on the orientation of the shirt. Again, this is the typical orientation for doing a standard front or back if your collar is over here, which is our standard way of loading the platen.